as Texas prepares for another scorching summer, the state house has agreed to install air conditioning in dozens of prisons over the next seven years. The catch? Lawmakers still have to find a way to pay for it. Good morning, I'm Anna Somerset and welcome to VS News Desk. Here's some commentary on legal news making headlines on May 19, 2021. Last week, the House passed a bill that would require Texas lockups to be cooled at an estimated cost of $300 million. The bill has been sent to the Senate where its fate is still unclear. In the last decade, at least 13 men have died of heat stroke while incarcerated in Texas prisons. Let's listen to an inmate who was interviewed by the Marshall Project and the Weather Channel about living in this extreme heat. It's like day-to-day -day torture. It's like you dread waking up in the, in the morning because you know you have to deal with this extreme heat. I'll actually wet my floor down and I'll strip down to nothing but my boxes on. And I'll put my fan right there, blowing right in my face. No matter what we try to do, rags over our head, water on the floor, fans blowing on us, it does absolutely no good at all. It feels like I'm, I'm suffocating. I feel that dread every day that why wow, I've got to go through another day like this. This summer. So, did you know that Texas prisons didn't have air conditioning? Or do you care? That's one of the main questions that I'm left with as a criminal practitioner, I think. Too often when we send people to prison as a government, as, a, as law enforcement, as the prosecution, we tend to forget about them. What happens to them? What do those days look like? Often during plea negotiations, when we're talking about prison time, we're obviously talking about terms of years. Prosecutor could be asking for six. The defense attorney is asking for two. They negotiate and settle on four. But what does that four really mean? Do prosecutors and defense attorneys and judges really understand the day for day that the individual is going to have to live out their sentence and what type of conditions they're living in? Are we imprisoning people that really need to be imprisoned or are we using prison as just another mechanism or last resort to resolving a case? As a criminal practitioner, I've really come to understand that prisons should be reserved for those who must be separated from society, whether it's for the safety of the community at large, the safety for the individual victim in a case, or the safety of future victims. If we're looking at someone who is a future danger based upon their violent history or the violent act of the crime that they committed. I think it is uh, too often that we see cases resolve in prison time because someone violated their probation or didn't work a rehabilitation program successfully, or simply has too many priors that a prosecutor would think probation is appropriate. It's no surprise that we continue to incarcerate more people per capita than any developed country in the entire world. And we have to start asking ourselves why. Because if we're subjecting people in a Texas summer to no air conditioning, and nobody really knew, or if they did know they didn't care, is that what we want for our society? When we talk about terms of cruel and unusual punishment, we're usually discussing the way that someone is executed on death row or a person with a mental illness or a disability or a low IQ being subjected to prolonged prison sentences, lack of parole or the death penalty. That's generally the conversation that surrounds cruel and unusual. But what about something like this? Can you imagine surviving a Texas summer with no air conditioning? Is that what should be the punishment for a particular crime? And if it is, if that is appropriate, what term of years really means on a day-to-day -day basis when you're looking at a small cell, either in solitary or with a few other people with very little to do? It seems to me that when you put somebody in prison in these conditions, it will be very difficult, if not impossible, to get that person back in society in a better position than when they went in. 
too often we know that prison continues to make and foster criminals because what else is there? They've now been subjected to the worst of the worst conditions. And when they get out, they have a record, which makes it very difficult, if not impossible, to live a straight life. What do you think? Do you think prison should be used strictly for punishment reasons? Do you think it should be used for deterrence? Or do you think we should be focusing on rehabilitation and reserve prison and these types of living conditions for those who are truly, truly a danger to society? Really interested in your thoughts. It's been an ongoing debate for a long time. What cases should be resolved and how they should be resolved and whether punishment, rehabilitation, or deterrence is the primary goal of our system and whether it should be. I'm Anna Somerset. That's it for today on BS News Desk, the place you turn to for the latest legal news. Please comment below with your thoughts on this one. Thanks for joining us.